FITC is pleased to introduce Robert Hodgen. Robert Hodgen is co-founder of the Barbarian Group, an incredibly successful digital services and creation company, and is currently the creative director at Bloom Studio. Today, he will give us a glimpse into the depths of his mind and his curiosity as he discusses the invisible forces all around. Please welcome Robert Hodgen. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And thanks to Sean for having me out for FITC's 10th anniversary. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, I'm going to dive right in because I have a lot that I want to cover. Um, I wanted something like this. I wanted to be able to, to do something magical and Miyazaki-ish. I wanted to be able to point a webcam at a tree and have these unseen creatures appear in the webcam view only. But how do, you, how do you draw a depth map for a scene like this? I wasn't going to do it. And you know, as the seasons change or as branches fall off trees, you're going to have to constantly redo the depth map. And this was you know, back in 2006, 2007. And depth cameras existed, but uh, they were very expensive. So uh, I moved the project onto my roof. Uh, I had a fantastic apartment, and this was my view from the roof. Uh, so I took a really high-res photo, and I brought it into Photoshop and divided it up manually into six distinct layers so that I could then start to inject some content. Um, I, I don't have anything against this building, but it became the source of much of my rage. But I was, you know, I was, I was impressed at how reasonably good these effects looked simply because you can see them, you can see the, the burning fall behind uh, the roof line. So it seemed like it was actually happening. Uh, next, I decided to do something a little less violent. Well, no, it's probably more violent. Sorry. Uh, the slowest moving meteorites ever. But the illusion ends up being pretty sound because these, you know, fairly rudimentary particle effects do feel grounded in this space. Poor Fox Plaza. Um, so then the pigeon arrived. I had a window box outside my kitchen and uh, I didn't use it and so this pigeon decided that he would take advantage, she would take advantage of it. I'm assuming it was a she. Um, I, I wanted to do something novel because I, you know, I had access to a pigeon that was less than a foot away from my kitchen window. So I put an eyesight camera in there on a tripod, uh, covered it to keep it protected from the weather, and then uh, used processing to analyze the incoming web feed so that I could try to locate where the pigeon's head was, where I would place a cute little red hat. And for about three weeks uh, that summer, it was all the rage. I got boing boinged. It was fantastic. Um, and uh, I just, you know, I kept time-lapse videos of this uh, poor pigeon losing dignity. And eventually these perfect little ovoids turned into these horrible things. <laughs> all covered in uh, orange clown hair and spikes and uh, just, just hideous. But uh, the process of finding the pigeon's head involved me looking for the, high, the highest concentration of bluish gray pixels in the screen because that was probably going to be part of the pigeon's body. But there were errors because if the pigeon turned around, I'd end up putting the hat on his butt, uh, her butt. Um, and if I had had uh, something like the Kinect, some sort of you know, reasonable depth camera, then I probably could have done some more uh, immersive 3D that would wrap around you know, these forms. Because I, you know, if I had depth information that was updating in real time, I wouldn't have to worry about drawing depth maps. And I would just know where these horrible spawns uh, were situated in space. And then you could steampunk them. You could do whatever you want. Um, so the, uh, I mentioned that Barbarian Group moved to a far shittier view. This was the view that replaced the beautiful view of the Golden Gate Bridge. Um, this nice uh, alleyway slash public urinal. But right outside of my office window, I had this view, which was just of a rooftop that nobody ever went on. Uh, so I looked on uh, Google Maps and found what the overhead looked like and started to, uh, to model it again, drawing my own manual depth maps until I discovered that SketchUp had a feature where you could create depth maps. If you could create the model in 3D, you just set a fog from black to white, and you could have uh, a fairly accurate depth map. 
and this is what I ended up with. Uh, I didn't do much with it because shortly after that I ended up leaving the Barbarian group, so uh, I took my camera with me. But, um, you know, I was, I was reasonably happy with the results and this was starting to go somewhere interesting. So then the Connect arrived, and uh, hopefully some of you saw some of the Connect talks that were here uh, and know a little bit about it. I ended up buying a Connect because there were suddenly plenty of, of open, source li open source libraries available for uh, processing open frameworks and Cinder. Cinder is the C++ framework that I use for most of my work now. And uh, right out of the box, you know, there's a simple point cloud demo. I'm sure you've seen this effect quite a bit in these last uh, few months. But then uh, Andrew, the person who created uh, the Cinder framework, told me that the library actually supported two connects, so I went out and got a second one, because I wanted to see what would happen if I had both of them pointing at me. Uh, and unfortunately, there was interference from one connect to the other, because you're looking at a spray of infrared dots on me. Yeah, it's pretty ridiculous, but. A good time was had. So uh, I went back to just using one connect because it gave me uh, more predictable results. And then I did this, and this, this project did quite well. Um, I was able to sort of inflate myself <laughs> in real time. The fact that it works in real time was really impressive to me. And this was uh, an accident. I didn't intend to make this effect. I was trying to find ways to smooth out all the flickering rough edges that you get when you're using the connect to analyze depth. A little frightening. <laughs> and of course my kitty was not immune. <laughs> it's a good kitty. <laughs> He's very patient. Uh, this is this is one that I'm actually a little embarrassed to show because it's pretty easy to picture me walking around alone in my living room in the dark, <laughs> holding hands with seven copies of me that aren't actually there. I think you're laughing a little too hard. <laughs> it's not that ridiculous. You'd see a bottle of wine in the corner. It was a late night. My windows were open too, so I wonder what people walking by might have seen. And I'm going to switch videos when the Shiva arms start. Oh. <laughs> Good for multitasking. So I posted this video on Vimeo and uh, one of the comments, or actually um, more than one comment, <laughs> suggested that uh, this would be a good effect for Aphex Twin to use. Because it's a little spooky and Aphex Twin is known for embracing digital culture. Uh, and much to my surprise, a couple weeks later, the VJ who does the visuals for Aphex Twin contacted me to see if I could supply them with an app that they could run during Aphex Twin's New Year's Eve show in Rome. I was pleased to see he sort of did the same ridiculous gestures that I was doing. But he was doing it in front of crowds of thousands of screaming Romans. So that ended up being a nice example of, of exploring something that amuses you, something that you have enough passion to want to explore in your own time and then have it turn into a paying job.